Subscribe to join us and our travels as we share our life on the sea. We're leaving our favourite little place, Dodola. We have a major problem. There's no meat on the boat. We've got no fish, no meat. There's only one way to solve this problem. So the last few days we've had a lot of um We're plant. going spearing, guys. Woo! <laughs> Someone's had a little bit too much coffee this morning. I don't know how many he's had, but it's it's up there. It's, <laughs> it's about three or four. So we're, we're in for a real treat today. Um, I actually love it when he's like that. <laughs> what has happened the last few days, when you live on a sailing boat, plans just go in and out of the window. You think you're going one way and then you go another and everything changes very, very quickly. We had um, some parcels delivered to Tanate, which was our original plan to head down the west coast of Halmahera, which is a big town called Tanate. We need to stock up on provisions and we thought that's where we were heading. So we got some packages, uh, Taj's contact lenses that he needs uh, ordered there. So we were heading there and we headed off and we went about 60 nautical miles in that direction. We then had a bit of a spinner thrown in the works because there's a boat that left from Australia a couple of months ago and they are bringing very kindly bringing some things from Australia for us. Anyway we got a message from them yesterday and where we were planning on meeting them that already passed through. So we had to turn around, <laughs> we're going to have to go back to Rajarampat and meet this boat that has our stuff but we also need to get Taj's contact lenses from Tanate. So we are at the moment going back to Tabello, um, which is the top of Helmahera and there is a very lovely guy there from immigration who we got our stuff delivered to his house in Tanate to his wife and he is going to Tanate and bringing our packages to us in Tabello in two days. Um, we're super grateful for everybody, for everything, but it's all just, you know, sometimes things just flow and work and sometimes they just are really um, a little bit all over the shop. We've felt a little bit all over the shop the last few days, but right now we are going spear fishing and we are going back to Tabello and we're going to, in two days, head back over to Rajarampa. That is our plan so far. It may change. But that's what's going on. Um, it's, it's tricky living on a boat and living this lifestyle and it's really tricky being remote and kind of organise things that you need. Anyway, I'm going to stop rambling on. We're going spearfishing. Can't wait. The boys are going to catch some fish and I'm going to just go hopefully catch them doing it on camera. If you haven't noticed, I very rarely capture them actually spearing a fish because I usually swim off and get caught looking at little things. But I will try and stay with them today. They're gonna to catch some fish. We're gonna fill the freezer and head to Tabello. Then we're going off, heading remote again, and God, who knows where we're gonna end up. The kids are looking after the boat while wow, Daddy takes me for a swim. Mum couldn't leave here without one more little stop at this beautiful sand cave that she loves so much. So Taj and I continued in Catalpa while Mum and Dad went on a date at a secluded private island. This is Lee's dolphin calling. It's a dolphin drum, that one, guys. What's this? <laughs> um. I didn't do the last bit. Oh, that'll bring him in. You watch. I think they're gone this way. <laughs> oh, they didn't like my drums. I was going to start singing. When I was a young boy, I wanted to circumnavigate the globe, living on the sea. That's a life for me. Where are they? Oh, they're over there. Yeah. They seriously, we came over to them. They're all just hanging on the surface. And uh, I don't know if it was Lee's drumming or he's singing, but they're gone. Off to the island we go.
so we continued on our way, leaving Morotai for the last time. We're going to catch some fish. We've found this little spot. It's in the middle of nowhere. It's miles from the mainland, so we're hoping that it hasn't been fished out. So let's go check it out. We've seen what it looks like on the chart. It's time to go and fill the freezer because the kids are starving. Let's do it. The dads found a reef to stop at on the way, so all the boys got their spear gear, jumped in Nalakai's tender, Ali was the boaty, and mum joined them to film. Meanwhile, Tara and I captained our boats to continue on course to Tabello. Matt was the first and only one to catch a fish. And what a fish it was, a massive long nose emperor. Well done, Matt. At least someone can feed his family today. Determined to provide, Dad and Taj kept hunting, but had no luck. Unfortunately, Taj will have to endure the pain of eating veggie patties once again. Just kidding, Matt's fish was big enough and he was kind enough to share. It was a bloody tasty one. Cheers, Matt. Guys, we're at the top of Hill Mahera uh, in a little town called Tabello. We're currently waiting on Taj's contact lenses to come across the mainland from the other side. And in that time, I thought it'd be a good time to give Catalpa a quick little service. Hold on, I'm warming the engine up for starters because before I start, I actually warm the engine up, mix all the oil in and pumps out easier. Hold on, I'll turn that off. Our service is 250 hours, so that's what I'm doing, and that's what I do generally, 250 hour service. Um, basic service for me is I replace the oil filter, um, first stage fuel filter, second stage. Um, like I say, everyone's boat's different, but as long as you keep your fuel filters changed, your oil filters changed, clean oil, water topped up, air filter clean, that's pretty much it for a diesel. Um, they should pretty much start first time every time if you uh, keep them up to scratch with your service. Maybe have a cold beer afterwards. Oh, I didn't even put a beer in the fridge. Yeah, there's one in there. Oh, there's one in there. Perfect. You always got to have one of those for after you finish. Nice cold beer, sit back, turn the engine on, go, geez, I've done a good job. All right, here we go. As you can see, this is our engine bay. <laughs> Where's all the room? Well guys, <laughs> hindsight, you want an engine you can get access to, not one that's down in the well like this. 
So, hey, if you've got no problems, it's all happy days. But if you do have problems and your engine is down there, it's so hard to work on. So, my ideal boat would have an engine that I can walk around and access. But this is what I have and this is what I have to work with. It's all red bucket. I just wanted to film this because he's got a lot of tools. He's got a lot of tools, but they're in hatches and they're put away. Um, this is his go-to that he has under the stairs so that it's easy grab. I don't know what's in here, but it looks like a Stanley knife. We've got some screwdrivers, shifters, all the things that are, are quick grabs and he keeps that under the stairs. Oh, so if I had access to this engine at a workable height and the bung was sort of reachable, I could just dump the oil into a pan, but I can't in this case. It's down in the bottom of the bilge. So I have a valve here. I know you just hook that onto there. Open that valve up and I can pump my oil out. Sometimes halfway through the service it's easier to get someone else to do the pumping. This is actually what really happens behind the scenes. He pretends he does everything but he's very good at delegating. <laughs> Come on darling, a few more litres to go. You'll be right. Okay, finish. Hubbies. Keep going. <laughs> you just got to keep an eye on him. Nelly there. A little bit more. A little bit more. <laughs> yeah. Just about done it, darling. Good job. Here's a little container. And I place that under my oil filter. Because my oil filter actually place is facing downwards. So a little bit gets spilt here. But I collect it. I'm trying to get the oil in the bilge. Here's my old filter. Again, it's a genuine one. First thing I do is make sure the O-ring is on here when I remove it. Because if this O-ring has for some reason uh, welded itself onto the engine, and you're not aware of that, and you put your new one on, it'll leak between where the old one's been left on and the new one meets, or twist up, or vice versa, whatever. So just make sure that's off. There's the old one. So I've just dated and put my hours down at the time of service. Oh look, I can't be bothered getting up, because I'm sweaty. I'm just going to grab a bit of old oil from the old filter here, rub it on here, oil up this O-ring. Oh, hold on, just got to adjust that fan. Oh, there is no wind. We are in one of the hottest parts of the globe, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, we're going to keep going. Take our lid off. How much oil does our engine take, baby? Well, depends if you put the bung in or not. And take oil all day long if you forget to put the bung in. But anyway, if you do that, I think it's about six and a bit litres, I think. Not everyone's perfect with their hours when they change the filters. So it's been a thousand hours, guys. And see there, the new filter and the old. Even after a thousand hours, it's probably not too bad, really. Um, it's definitely in need of a change, but hey, it didn't stop the engine and um, we'll get it sorted now. Dad changed the fuel filter and didn't film the rest, but if you would like to see a more detailed video on Dad maintaining the engine, join our mates club, there's one over there. So we are leaving Halmahera today, we're at the very top of Halmahera and we are heading back to Rajarampan. That wasn't the plan. We were not going to head that way again, but uh, circumstances have changed. We've got to go meet a boat there, and yeah, we're not too sad about it. Raj Rampat is beautiful, so we will head back on through there and show you some more. Actually, it's in season now, so the diving and everything, the mantas, everything should be incredible. So we will check it out again. Anyway, the captain's pulling up the sail before we even leave the harbour, and uh, I'm going to go pull the anchor. And we're off. We got our overnight passage. I think it's about 100 nautical miles to a little island we're going to stop at. See if we can spear some fish there. And then we're going to keep going on to Wayag. Woohoo! All right. 
Ready, we've got to cover down today. We're serious about sailing. Um, usually in Indonesia we do a lot of motoring, so we leave our cover up a lot of the time because it's just it's nice to have some shade. But we've got the cover down. We are serious and we are going to go sailing today. Hopefully the wind is with us. I'm gonna pull the anchor. All right, let's go. See you later, Helmahera. It's been amazing.